Hey, welcome back for another Nutrition Bites. My name is Kate Watts. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist. Today, we're starting a three-part series on nutrition label reading, and the first part is gonna be all about carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are energy for our body and they provide calories. So for each gram of carbohydrate, we get four calories. Carbohydrates are broken down into glucose when we eat them, also known as blood sugar. And this is really the body's main source of energy, especially our brain and other tissues, as well as our muscles really like using glucose for energy. Now, because of carbohydrates role in turning into glucose or blood sugar, it's a hot topic for people managing prediabetes or diabetes. We want to make sure that we get enough carbohydrates from our food for that energy our body needs. However, if we consume too much at one time, we get a spike in our blood sugar. Carbohydrates are found in a wide range of foods and come in a variety of forms. The most common and abundant forms are sugar, starch, and fiber. We can use the Nutrition Facts label to monitor our carbohydrate intake and to identify healthier carb choices. Now, when you look on the label, you'll see that carbohydrates are listed as total carbohydrates, and then that is split into dietary fiber and total sugars. Anytime that you see an item indented in on the nutrition label, it means that that amount is included in the title item above it. So what is a good amount of total carbohydrates to aim for? Typically, or on average, we would aim for 45 to 60 grams of carbohydrate per meal and 15 to 30 grams of total carbohydrate per snack. But this varies depending on the individual. So if, especially for someone who's managing prediabetes or diabetes, you'd wanna work with your doctor or registered dietitian to identify an amount that's appropriate for you. Now, another way to look at total carbohydrates is the percent daily value. So if we look down this side of the nutrition label, this is gonna show us the amount of that nutrient and how it contributes to our overall daily intake. So for example, for total carbohydrates, the daily value is 275 grams of carbohydrate for the whole day based on a 2000 calorie diet you may need more or less. But what's helpful when looking at total carbs is to look at actually for this serving, um, what percentage of daily value you're getting. And so anything that is 5% daily value or less is considered low, and anything that's 20% daily value or more is considered high. Now, don't forget to check that serving size. This is really important because all the values listed here are for that serving, not for the whole container. So for example, this food, the serving size is two thirds cup, which provides 37 total grams of carbohydrate. If we were to consume one cup of this food, we would be consuming 55 grams of total carbohydrate. But if we were to eat this whole container, we would be consuming 296 grams of carbohydrate. Next, let's look at dietary fiber. So this form of carbohydrate is actually a really healthy choice. It is not digested as quickly as other carbohydrates, so it doesn't spike our blood sugar. It also really helps with digestion, helps lower cholesterol, and it helps keep us full and satisfied. Unfortunately, most Americans do not get enough fiber. Uh, we typically need somewhere between 25 and 30 grams of dietary fiber each and every day. Fiber comes from all of our plant foods, which include our fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans and legumes, nuts, and seeds. When you're looking on the label, uh, if a serving size of a food has more than five grams of dietary fiber, that's a really excellent source. And you're gonna see this mainly in things like beans. And unfortunately, most of our produce items high in fiber aren't going to have a nutrition label. So it's kind of rare that you see high fiber foods when you're looking at labels. Now for breads and cereals and snack items, it's really good to look for three grams or more of fiber as a reasonable goal. Next, let's talk about total sugars. Sugars are the smallest form of carbohydrate, so they are easily digested and absorbed, which provides quick energy, but it won't last long. 
Total sugars include both natural sugars in the food, like ones that are found in fruit and milk. Also includes added sugars, which are used by the food manufacturer to sweeten processed foods using things like syrups or table sugar. Now, most Americans exceed the recommended limits for added sugars, which are 25 grams or less per day for women and kids, and 36 grams or less per day for men. When you're looking on the nutrition label at individual products, it's helpful to go by a simple rule of thumb, which is choosing items with less than 10 grams of added sugar per serving. Let's talk about a few more things you may see on the food packaging related to carbohydrates. First up, soluble and insoluble fiber. So it's voluntary for a food manufacturer to list out the certain type of fiber on the nutrition fact label. Most fruits and vegetables actually contain both forms of fiber. The difference is that soluble fiber is gonna absorb water, turning it into a gel-like substance, whereas insoluble fiber will not. Both of these are beneficial for your health. Another item you may see on the food label is Sugar alcohols. Now, this type of carbohydrate is not fully absorbed by the body, and so it provides a sweet taste with a fewer amount of calories per gram than sugar. While sugar alcohols do naturally occur in very small amounts in fruits and vegetables, they are normally commercially prepared by food companies to be added as a reduced calorie sweetener to products such as sugar-free gum, candies, and desserts. Speaking of sugar-free, let's talk about some of the different claims you may see on food packaging. So if you see the term no sugar added, that means just that. No sugar has been added to the food, but natural sugars may still be occurring in that food. If you see the term sugar-free, it means that there is half a gram of sugar per serving in that food or less. Now, it may contain artificial sweeteners or sugar alcohols in addition to that low amount of real sugar. And the last claim you may see is low sugar. And this means that that product contains 25% less sugar than its original version by that food company. So you still wanna look at the nutrition label because that can sometimes still be a significant amount of sugar in that food. Last thing you may see is net carbs. And this is a simple equation of total carbohydrates minus dietary fiber. So it's given in grams. And food companies are not legally allowed to claim that something is low carb. So they sometimes will use this net carb equation as a marketing strategy instead. I hope this information was helpful for you today. It takes some practice reading nutrition facts labels. I know there's a lot of information on here and that's why we are gonna slowly break this down section by section as we continue with our three-part series. But practice really does help you get familiar with these numbers. And right now it's the best tool we have to know what exactly is in our food that is then going into our bodies. So stick with me and I'll see you next month.